As we saw in uh, this video right here, the main point of calorimetry is to relate a heat uh, change to the enthalpy, thereby measuring the enthalpy. And so in this simple setup here, uh, one simply measures the change in temperature for the system. And so in this case, the system is a cup with water. And then we translate the change in temperature to heat by using the heat capacity. In this case, the heat capacity of water. And then we have the mass here. So this, in this particular case, it's the heat, per ca uh, heat capacity per gram. And so this would be the number of grams. So then uh, we translate the change in temperature, which we measure, to delta H. The heat capacity then has to be the change in enthalpy as a function of temperature. Uh, and, and so since enthalpy is related to pressure, this is the heat capacity at constant pressure. So that summarizes how we get the enthalpy. If we also want the ent entropy, then that's usually gotten by measuring the equilibrium constant by some other method uh, that we've talked about in previous videos. And from that we can get delta H, uh, delta S standard. Uh, we translate the equilibrium constant to a free energy change, a standard free energy change. We know the enthalpy from calorimetry. We know what temperature we've done it at, and so then we can get delta S from this. Here is a slightly different kind of calorimetry that you can also use to measure uh, delta S, uh, delta H standard, and also delta S. It's called differential scanning calorimetry. And so that involves measuring the heat capacity as a function of temperature. So you have the heat capacity here, temperature here, and as we increase the temperature of the system, we find that the heat capacity increases, reaches a maximum, and then decreases again here. So that delta Cp is the difference between the heat capacity of the products here minus the reactants here. And then we get delta H standard by the area under this curve here. This is delta H standard at the temperature where the heat capacity is a maximum. That's called the melting temperature. If we want the enthalpy and entropy changes at other temperatures, uh, then we do the following. So first, uh, let's get the entropy change. So as we'll see in following videos, the equilibrium constant at the melting temperature is 1. And so that means that the standard free energy at this temperature is zero. So if delta G standard is zero, then we can solve for delta S standard. We know this, the enthalpy change, and the melting temperature from the differential, differential scanning calorimetry measurement. And so we can get delta S standard from this at the melting temperature. If we then want to know delta H standard and delta S standard at other temperatures, then we use these equations. So we use the change in heat capacity that we got from our experiment and simply plug in uh, the measured enthalpy change at the melting temperature, the melting temperature, and delta Cp. And then we can get it for any new temperature we want. And the same principle applies to the entropy the equation is a little different. Okay, so here's a question for you. What do you think the units are for the heat capacity? So press pause, think about it, and when you're ready to answer, press play. Ready? So the answer is in joules, is joules per mole Kelvin. And so if you think about it, that that makes sense. If this is the definition of the heat capacity, right? we have enthalpy divided by temperature 
So one unit for enthalpy is joules per mole, and one unit for temperature is Kelvin. So the units of the, the heat capacity must be joules per mole Kelvin.